What's poppin', man? Not much. Welcome to the show. I had an opening and, you know, I, the first person I thought of was you because I was listening to your song the other day, Chillin' With Bay. That's probably the best song off the album, I think, in my opinion. Love yeah, Bush Street. Yeah. Everybody, everybody say that's the best one, man. I need to shoot a video to it, but I've been, you know, with this pandemic and everything that's going on, it's been just crazy, man. But I'm still working on it, you know? Yeah. Welcome to the show. But we, we, I've been in touch with you for a couple of years now, and you're finally here. You've been working hard. You're still producing. That's something that I like about you, and that makes you very talented. There's very few artists in the game that can eat, song, write, sing, and produce, and that's you. Yeah, man. I, I do everything. I don't um, I don't wait. I don't like to wait on people. So I just teach myself. If it's something that I need to be done, I just teach myself how to do it. So mm -hmm. I record my own music, everything. So but uh, only thing I don't do is mix and master. But I feel like that is something that you have to get someone that does that all day. They're like, yeah. When it comes to your mix and master, that's uh, which is one of my partners actually. But everything else, you know, um, I do it. Um, but I am my team. It's like me. So I'm the only person that really behind my music is me. So yeah, <laughs> different when it's like that, man. Um, but yeah, man, we've been in touch for a while, man. We've been we've been talking about getting getting together for a minute. Dude. Yeah, yep. So now we're finally here. Like I said, I I usually don't purchase any of my artists that I know music. They usually send it to me. But yours, I purchased it. It was that good. Man, I appreciate that. That's hey, that's that's a good thing to hear, dude. That is good. Yeah, because I the artists they know that I have the show at the university and I'm doing things on the side as well, so they just send it to me. You know, get it, get this in the rotation. I heard that because I I look at all the notifications for people I follow, especially the artists, so I know I keep it up to date. And I saw that you dropped the album Love But Street, and as soon as it dropped, I downloaded it and then wow. put it right in the rotation. I know you sent me, I forget which one. I think it was a '90s R&B Love. You sent me the clean single because I yeah. had that. I had I was able to get that played more. Wow. Would it be clean? Yeah. Well, I did send you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know uh, what was it because we didn't speak after that. So I didn't really know what you were doing. Uh, man, you were just like, give me the clean version. Um, that's dope, though, man. That's that's real. Dope. I appreciate it, man. Because uh, it's all about marketing and getting your music everywhere you can, really. So everywhere is it's, it's play helps. Yeah. I feel like the game need real music, a certain type of sound, and I'm. I'm giving that sound. I mean, I don't want to change up because everybody is a trend. You know, most music is trendy right now. Everybody just want to sound like everybody else so they can get paid. I mean, but, you know, I have a passion for music. So it's not about uh, the money. It's about uh, the message and the feeling of what music, like good music. Like, you know, it's uh, good music changes, you know, so many things in the world. Like, you know, we got so much detrimental music about so much bad stuff. I feel like we need this sound, you know. Uh, so, I mean, I feel like it's my duty to do it. So I just I just got to keep pushing and keep dropping music. Uh, that's pretty much it. I done dropped two new singles since we spoke. Uh, yeah. On top of Instagram Girlfriend was one of them. Yeah, and Good Girls, too. I got another yep. one. That one. That one pretty dope, too. But yeah, I just dropped uh, the, the uh, Instagram girlfriend. I produced that one too. So as you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it's it's uh, R and B is a different line. Lane. Like it's a different. You got to push harder. You got to network harder. It's because rap is dominant right now. And, um, yeah, and it's not even rap anymore, which is crazy. Nah, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, but um, I just stay in my own lane, man. I don't, I don't try to sound like other people. I don't try to, because my influences are a lot of older music. So I don't even, I don't even listen to the radio, honestly. I don't, you know, um, unless it's yeah. some older music. And you can hear it in your music. You can hear it. You even see it in '90s R&B love. You're giving back to all the artists in that '90s era. You know, yeah. I thought the 2000s was not that bad. I don't no, think it was that no, bad. No, they had some. They had some dope artists because that's when like Ja Rule and all them Shanties and the, they had some dope music. Yeah, but then there's a certain point when you get to the late 2000s and now in the 2010s where R&B is starting to go downhill. The auto tune starts to take over. That's the that's the thing. It's like. Um, 
it's a sound like people trying to follow a certain sound. That's why everybody sounds the same. It's like, yep. because that's what sells and everybody looking at it from a business perspective. But I mean, music has to be music first. It's music business. It's not business music. It's like, you have to have that sound because I would rather make that timeless music that'll be around forever to make a song that might be popping for a month or two. Then you got to make something else. Then you got to make something else. I mean, sometimes it might take five or seven, five to seven years for a song to blow. I've seen it happen. Um, but long as you stay true to making real music, like once it does, it's like everybody go back and get all your music and they'd be like, man, they've been creating some dope content. So uh, I just, I just want to stay true to real music, man, because there's so many people selling out to money right now. Yep. That's the problem. But they forgetting the older artists still getting paid from music that was made in the seventies, dude. They get doing shows, but it's real music. Especially now, now with the pandemic going on, because of this pandemic has really did a lot of damage to the music industry. So now everyone's revisiting all these old songs because they're looking for new material. Yeah. Now they're starting to profit off of it. Yeah, it is. Yep. It's very important to make music that's going to be relevant for from years to come because that's the lifetime money. I mean, I could have been signed to a label, but they change your whole, they want you to change your whole dialogue, change how you do music. Oh, yeah. put, you got to put the auto tune on, right? You got to put it on. You got to do a certain song. Yep. Yeah. Your whole message got to change. They kind of, there you go. They alter everything you do. Some people, man, I'd have been off of 250 K. I'd have been off of, I mean, but you know, I know what comes with that. Like, yeah. Are you going to change my sound? You're going to change my message. I can't. I can't sing about what the rapper's talking about. Like that's that's not R and B. Like yeah. R and B is rhythm and blues. People forget the name of the R and B. Like it's not. It's a certain sound. So I don't. I just don't want to sell out for money. I want you know. Eventually, the world will, will hear it and be like, oh, you know. It'll, but you know, we we like what's popular. We don't we don't like what's the what's valuable, what's good, whatever popular. That's what we go for. That's what people go for. Yeah. You know? And, that, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to help change that. And you are too with your music because I, I, the audience is needed to hear that the real R&B is still there, especially what I do with the hip hop artists. They got to they gotta hear the lyrical artists too. Yeah, that's what yeah. I be on. I love I love hip hop. I love real music that matches, that that, that has a message that's like yeah. stories. Like I love hip hop regardless. Yeah. Like, I'm a big hip hop kid myself. Like I listen to a lot of hip hop. I don't listen to a lot of rap, but Hip hop is just a different feel, man. Yeah, in the '90s R&B video, you had Snoop Dogg in there on the on the TV. Yeah, I had yeah. The, the um that was the Gin and Juice video. Yeah. Um, I just my thing was, I feel like you have to pay homage to people that made it possible for you to do what you're doing. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm all about, like uplifting the artists that came before me, because I know if it wasn't for them, none of the artists would be out right now. So you have to show your respect to. And that was like my first major single. And I just wanted to let it be known, like some of the artists I listened to, not all of them, I couldn't put all of them on, but you see the message in the in the song, in the video, what I was trying to do. Yeah. I feel like that song need to be pushed more because I feel like it's a, it's, it's, that's a dope single too. But Chilling With Bay, I think I'm gonna push that one more too. But man, I got some jammers, man. I got a song I'm releasing Valentine's Day. It's so crazy. Man. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you. I saw you. the Paul Wall song that you had. Yeah, me. Um, I'm on that album, Paul Wall and um. Yeah. You, I just did some more stuff for them. I I be a behind the scenes work with so many artists that I like, but I'm just the chill artist. I'm not that uh, um, fame hungry, attention hungry. I can make dope music behind the scenes and be just as happy. Like I don't have to be known uh, because you could be successful in this company in this business without nobody knowing or you could be famous and not have no success you know is is people don't understand that they feel what's like the best way to meet in the middle you think where you have the fame and you you're profiting well um that fame comes with a price man yeah if you want to keep your peace and you know um just not be in the blogs and worrying about like it's it's really I can't really say no way to go in the middle because you got people like Neo that wrote for Beyonce like this dude is one of the biggest but he also has his fame so it's like yeah. once you get so big it's like you cannot avoid 
Yeah. That. So I don't know me. I just I just never been in a rush to get famous. Like I want to be successful and 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 um at peace. If it's not peaceful, I don't want it. You know what I mean? So yeah. Like, that's my thing, and I'm not really money hungry, materialist. Hungry. I feel like I gotta I have a duty to spread a certain message, and I'm cool with that. You know, I'm not the money and all that. Don't even. I'm not in it for that. Like, so, um, like I said, I got good intentions, so it'll come, you know. It'll come. It'll come. When did your passion of music start? How old were you? 15. 15? I didn't know I could sing until I was 15, honestly. So, like, uh, I had a horrible upbringing, so I didn't really have, have time to dream. Like, I had to, you know, make us, I had to survive. But, man, all my people, that I listen to older cats, Marvin Gaye and Al Green's, um, Usher, I like Usher, um, yeah. Chris Brown, I like Chris, um, uh, but most of his older people, man, Temptations, Jug, Earth, Wind and Fire, like a lot of old, old groups. That's what I like to listen to um, on a daily. Yeah. So that's where like my inspiration came from, older, older music. And, and music was always a way for, to, for me to escape all the craziness. So, you know, I mean, it's a, it's just a, this is just my life. Like it's a part of my, who I am. Music kept me alive. So, if I wasn't doing it. I don't know what I'd be doing. But I'd be doing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, cause you know, cause I don't smoke, drink, none of that club. Like, so I don't have no other outlet to. That's like my heart right there. Music. So that's good though. It could take you long. It could take you a long way that way. Because you're focused just in that one area because then the distractions come in, say if you were into that other stuff that you mentioned, th yeah. that takes you away from what your main goal is and what your number one passion is. It does, man. And, and uh, it's so many distractions and it's so much that will not um, break your focus in this world. Like you gotta stay, regardless, you gotta stay focused. And music is my motivation. A lot of people be like, oh, I want a mansion, I want this. I just wanna make good music. That's my, that's what keeps me going. Like, you know, um, but man, it's it's hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard, dude. But you know, I appreciate people like you to actually appreciate music because that's why I do it. Music, people that appreciate real music. I see. I saw all the CDs that you had in the in the compact discs in the video '90s R&B Love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big CD collector. I had most. I had most of them. Oh, really? Yo, uh, yeah, man. I used to be, man. But I, I between moving, I've lost the. But I, I believe in like hard copy CDs, man. I and do you have vinyls? I don't, man. I don't. Yeah. Have vinyls, but um, I just, I don't know, man. I'd be so caught up in making music. It's like I would never even listen to it. Like if I had even the CDs I have, like I never just sit. I just like to have them. I just like to have the hard copies of the CDs. If you could have five R and B, or even you, could, if you want to name your top five R and B albums, if you could have five R and B albums on vinyl, what would it be? Oh man, <laughs> five R and B albums. Uh, I'm gonna have to say Usher Confessions. That was mm -hmm. a dope album. Um, ooh, wow, <laughs> yeah. man, five. Um. Dang, man, it's hard to... R. Kelly, I got to say R. Kelly, man, because... 12 play. 12 play, of course. Musically, the dude was just a genius, man. Yep. So, uh, got to say him. Um, let me see who else. Jagged Edge. Um, the first album... No, not the first album. Um, Jagged Edge. What album I was telling? Let me, let me make sure. Because Jagged Edge is, like, another one of my favorite groups. The album Jagged Edge came out with called The Heartbreak, J.E. Heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I know which one it is. It's in my music library somewhere. Yeah, man. Um, Joe. Joe, the um, the All That I Am. Mm -hmm. And who else, man? Uh, and I got to say, the Al Green album, I'm Tired of Being Alone, that came out in, uh, I think, 1977, I think it came out. It's so many, but my 
people that I listen to is is, is not even in this era. So it's like <laughs> when I get the name of people, they be like, because I listen to everything, dude. Yeah. It's not, not, you know, but it'd be old from the 50s, 60s, like, you know, but I feel like that keeps you um knowledgeable of, of where you come from in real music. Yeah. Have you had the opportunity to work with any of the main R&B artists from that 90s era? I haven't, man. Um, I haven't never ran into any of them. Like, they give me props and like they reached out to me on social media, but I never just had an opportunity. I want to do something with Jagged Edge, though. I want to do something with Jagged Edge. I want to do something with... Um, I do want to do something with uh, Daniel Jones. Um, man, I want to do something with... Well, can't do no R. Kelly right now, but <laughs> yeah. I would like to do something with him because he's, he's so smart when it comes to music, so talented. Um, I want to do something with Joe. Like, all these other... Like, I really... My dream is to take all the 90s r and and just make an album, like have them all on one album with me. That's like my dream. Like That's fire. The dopest R&B, like from Joe to the 112 to the Jagged Edge, and have a song with each one of them. And, and man, that'll be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like that'll change the game. That'll, that'll change the game. I think Case working on a new album right now. Yeah. Uh, will be out in August. He working on I know that's going to be dope because I'm supposed to be doing some writing on it. So. Uh, oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing some writing on it. Uh, but um, I really want to. I want to. It might come in the future, man. And you never know. You never know. Yeah, I hope it does because I think you see the big artist working with you. You basically got the cosign that way. And then people are like, well, let me tune into this guy, see what he's got. Yeah, I got I got a lot of big artists that respect me and, and work and reaching out to me like all the time. Hey, write this, produce this, get on this all the time. And you know, but it be mostly rappers. Like I be wanting some singers, like, but you know, singers don't get that that much publicity and marketing like rappers do. So it's like you might hear some dope music, but it's so not it's not that many people that know. So that's to be the issue. Mm-hmm. I've had SWV reach out to me and Tiny from um uh Escape. From, um, Escape. They they commented like that's dope. Like one um the the chick from SWV posted my single. So like I was like, that's dope. Cause you know, them groups that I really like, Escape and, and um SWV, like two of my favorite girl groups ever. Yeah. You know, I, that was dope. You know I mean, I thought that was I thought that was dope. Um, because I don't even know her and she posted. Not even on beat, and I was like, "Dang, that's crazy!" You know. Um, what was the most surprising person that reached out to you, or the most surprising repost? That was probably one. That one. SWV because SWV is like my favorite, one of my favorite girl groups. So when I seen that, I was like, "Dang!" Like that was that was. I just <laughs> that was one of the dope because I got songs with Master P. I Man, I got songs with a lot of big people in it. Yeah. But I, I just I just love real music. Like, you know, when somebody reach out to me like that, I just be like, dang, that's crazy, man. And it'll 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 get more out there. Mm-hmm. Just takes marketing, man. Yeah. Would you do would you do a song with Drake? Because it, he's got the vocal ability too. And that's crazy. Man, Drake dope, man. Drake is a dope artist. And I think so many people um forget see i'm big on music so a lot of people looking at his fame but i musically the dude been dope man like been i was on drake when so far gone came out man everyone been, was sleeping people thought i was nuts are you like him people were like always oh, in his feelings and all this stuff and i remember drake that got his own sound when he came out i knew he was going like when he was on the mixtape with wayne like i knew I yeah. was like, this dude's gonna be crazy like so Drake, Drake is an artist I would love to do something with, dude. Um, I believe for my musical capabilities and him, it'll be crazy. <laughs> like I would do a straight '90s R&B track. It wouldn't be no. It, it'll probably be like a hip hop, like a biggie, like some sound like that with him. Like it'll be on a whole nother level because I feel yeah. like you can get on that level. Like Drake talents. It's a lot of talented artists out there, man. Like that I would like to work with. Drake one of them, he dope as hell, like he dope. Um, 
man, it's so many dope artists that don't get enough, you know, mm. credit for being dope artists. But timing is everything, though. Yeah. When do you think it's your time when you're really going to make it into the big, huge spotlight? When you're in that, let's say, Trey Song spotlight, Chris Brown spotlight? I really don't. I feel like it's about content and consistency and timing because it's like you never know who listening to your music. It can happen tomorrow. Like, you never know yeah. when the time is coming when it comes. Because I've had so many promises from the people. Like, oh, man, you showed up, blah, blah, blah. Then I do all this music for them, and they don't do what they're supposed to do. They don't keep their word. So yeah. I done had so many big things that's supposed to happen. But you know how this game is, man. This game is full of people that lie. So Yeah, snakes and liars and people that don't keep their word. And that's what's important is that people should just change their attitude with that. Because why? for an artist like you who's talented and can really – change the wave and the tide in this game right now, they should keep their promises when it comes to an artist like you. Yeah, but you know what? They, they should. But I be feeling like if it didn't happen with that person, it wasn't meant for me to be there. So I be like, because people passed up on Drake too. A lot of people told him he was he sucked. A lot of people told a lot of artists that they sucked, but that's big moguls right now. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, R. Kelly told Tony Braxton her voice was too deep. You know what I mean? Lauren Hill was booed off. You know what I mean? It's a lot of different people that are successful now that was told that they were they didn't have it or, or they was overlooked or so you know. It's it's just about getting the right person, that right connection, you know, with the right people to hear you what you gotta go. Because I know a lot of big people in New York that be believing what I'm doing and love what I'm doing, but they don't have the power to, to press the buttons. They just know people in places. So it's like, that's the thing. I gotta get to the person, the right person. Um, Cause I really wanna do movies too. When I do, um, I wanna do some acting. So it's, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. What, what kind of movies? Uh, maybe action, drama, stuff like that. Uh, I, can, I, can get, I can do that. So I really wanna get into that. But one one at a time. Most of the actors are singers, you know what I mean? Yeah, Tyrese. Real Scott. Tyrese, my dog. I met him. I hung out with him three days. Yeah. Cool, dude. Yep. Cool. Started from nothing, bro. From nothing. His first his first break was the Coca-Cola commercial. He told me about everything. He was like, I don't have nothing. So it's like you gotta start from someone when you do. That's it. Like it happens for you. It's coming, bro. Yeah, maybe you could be in Waist Deep Part Two. All right, <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish. That movie is a classic, dude. I don't yep. know why they didn't make another one. I don't know why they didn't make another one, but, you know, movies is politics just like the um, music. Is. Music, yeah, movies aren't as good as they used to be either. Nah, man, because it's, the message changed. You know, the message is changing. So it's yep. like the movie's going to be the same. So it's... Ah... It's, uh, I don't know what's happening to the world, man. We losing, we losing who uh, the compassion. We losing so much stuff because of influence. You know, everybody care about money now. Nobody care about people no more, and that's the problem. Yeah, you're right. Music used to be better. Movies used to be better. The world is turning. I hope the pandemic maybe makes people realize that people do matter. I don't think so because you see hundreds of thousands of people dying every day. Every we're about to lose another hundred thousand people. Probably by the time we reach the summer, maybe even closer than that. Yeah. And it's just crazy. It's um we 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 don't have no we don't care about each other, man. Animals have more compassion than humans in this life. We just we just don't care about each other, like and and the the message and the mu music is a big issue because I remember growing up. We had love music, so that made that change our mood. That made us want to be more compassionate. But now it's like every song is about the same thing now. So it's like you hear that so much, it it, it starts to affect you, even if you don't mm -hmm. see it. You start changing your attitude, you start changing how you think and look at people. So I, you know, they always say, what you consume, it it what you watch, all that stuff makes a big difference. Um, and that's the problem, man. You know. Yeah. We need to change what we consume. We need to change what we, uh, our environments and stuff that we influenced by. 
and that'll change a lot about the world. But I'm only one person. Now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that have to do a lot of the work, not just you. Yeah, man, we all got to get on the same page, man. It's and come together and and, and change this whole evil. Is what it is. Man. This world is horrible. Um, that's why I try to make love music, change the change the mood, change the the mindset a little bit. You know. Yeah. Now, what was the story behind Love Bush Street? Uh, the title is pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, I I grew up in the streets, um, experienced a lot of stuff in the streets, but I'm I'm a lover as well. So it's like it's the balance of two. Like, just pretty much saying people just because a person comes from the streets, they don't mean they can't love as well. So that's kind of like the message behind that. Like. You don't have to be a savage, you know what I mean? Just because you're from the streets. So it's like, that's that's pretty much where it comes from, man. Yeah. You hear it on the album, you hear the the pain and the emotion in each of the songs. No, If people out there right now are listening, you like that real R&B, no auto-tune, make sure you go check this out. Yeah, man, they got to, they got to check it out, man. Uh, any, all my music is, is, uh, is, is on that level of real, real singing, real music. So, um, and I know they'll like it. Everybody didn't listen to it like it. And I was gonna do another album, but everybody like, just drop singles. So I dropped a song called Quarantine Loving for Quarantine. I dropped- Yeah, I saw that. Singing. Like, I, um, I have a lot of music coming out um, that's in out, that's still on the same level. So, you know, um, I hope the people start like, gravitating to it a little bit more um besides what they already have yep i mean it's dope that you rocking with it though yeah you you already know i'm rocking with it and because it's real r and I i don't i mean <laughs> there's some okay artists but they're okay they're from right now but besides that it's, yeah it's not many it's, it's not it's not what it used to be no nah, man it's not it'll never be like that because People, I feel like people are scared. They either don't know how to make it or they're scared to make it because they feel like it's not going to be a success. But it's a market for that. Yep. It's, a, it's a market for it, but we just have to not be scared to to make that type of music, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I'm not scared to make that type of music. That's and good. As soon as I get out, I'm going to so make some music. As soon as I get out, we're going to get in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> there just needs to be a company or music record label that needs to grow a pair and just take the chance to start signing good artists. Yeah, man. I I honestly, the people that run these labels don't want that. I don't feel like they, I feel like they want detrimental music. They want, because think about it, man. Ain't no, ain't no money in peace. It's, it's money in violence. It's money in crime. It's money in hate. Like you make money off people killing each other. It's a billion dollar business. You don't make money off people coming and get loving each other. It's just, yeah. I think about that. Like, but what's crazy is they'll say violent, rap used to be very violent back in the day. That's what they'll say. But nowadays, it, it's pretty much the same, if not it's worse. worse now. It's worse now because back then, music, they were telling stories. Yeah. They wasn't saying, oh, we about to go such and such, such, such. No, every song now is about, I'm going to kill, blah, 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 blah. blah. Like they it's were, short and simple. It's it, there's no the message is just negative. Pop the pills. That's it. Yeah. Every song, every song, dude. And it's like um, they always say, "Oh, they 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 did this in the '80s. They did this." Man, come on. We know better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know the difference in the music now. We know every song they slinging guns and everybody want to be killers. Man, what happens to people just wanting to be good artists? And, you know, and uh, stand up people like. I don't know. I can't get into it. I can't change what I do because I know, man, like people all the time come to me like, man, I'm so glad I ran into an artist like you, like your music is what we need. I get so many people like that, dude. Why you haven't blew up? Like, what's this? Such a, like, we don't push that message. You know, um, that's why when I hear people be like, oh, man, they need to change the music. As long as there's executives in all in, in, in charge like that, it's not, they're not gonna change music. They're not gonna change it. You got people 
with religious rap getting taken down off TikTok because they're not talking about killing. They're getting taken off these these sites. But they wild. none of these other artists is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like it's, they, they I know there's some there's some serious I'll, I'll be diving into this in my my time on my show and interviews in the future I want to get to the bottom of it I, I saw an interesting post on social media the other day and it's just don't let don't let people forget where rap came from and what it sounded like because yeah. people are brainwashed out here right now they are they are you always have to that's why it's so important that's why I listen to so much older music because it keeps you grounded it keeps you knowing exactly where where it come from because if you get so caught up in all this new stuff it's like that's that'll be all you know like you'll start making music like that and i've seen a lot of artists do it even r kelly did it like he started if you listen to his black panties album the last one he had or one of the last ones he said it sounded like this new stuff a lot of it and i'm like that ain't even r kelly like man, yeah i didn't like i didn't like that album on, dude like why are y'all trying to like conform, like change your sound. We, well, I think he's trying to stay. He was trying to just stay relevant, and he don't I, need to because you, no, need, you need that same sound that he had it since 1991, 1992. Like that's why we like you, dude, because of that, not because of this new stuff. And that's the problem with artists. Like even the greats, listen to a lot of the good big artists. They change their sound. You be like, why are they doing that, dude? That ain't even. But I don't know, man. I'm not doing that. Because people need to know what music used to be all the time. They need to know what real music is. Yep. And and long as artists just changing and staying in this trendy, real music will fade away, dude, and won't nobody know nothing about it. But um it's very sparse the amount of real music that we get. And you represent that. You pay homage and respect to the greats, come on and go was I'm I'm gonna say right now is the acknowledgement to Christopher Williams. Man, you know, it's, it's, we need more radio shows like yours to be more on the mainstream because like you actually doing real stuff on your show, like real, real music, real, like everything. But I don't, I don't even feel like it's about real no more. I feel like it's about what's popular, like whatever popular whether it's the sound, whether it's the person. Well, people don't be popular that long. It'd be like a few months and then it's like on to the next person. And that's the problem, dude. Like we need to change that, you know, and people like you can change that. Like what you're doing is important. Letting letting real letting the real be heard is is very important. Yep. Yeah. It is, man. That's why I'm here. I think about it every day because I'm moving on. Once once my college career is up, it's up. And I got my degree. This is what I want to do for a career. And I want to make it big. I, even I thought about it, maybe not even like a radio station, but like a big TV channel. And they give me the platform and I bring artists on. You bring the big artists on, but then you get the spotlight to to the, the independent artist, too, that comes on. There's some ideas that I've been forming in my head. And, and it's time that we you can bring both worlds together. You can do that. You can't leave the real out of that's the thing, leaving the real out of the spotlight. Can't do nah, it. No, nah, you can't do that because if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be no no fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they pretty much uh they pretty much paved the way for everything that's going on right now. So man, I I'm just hoping the real comes back and the real be more important than than, than what's going on now. Because it's it's killing us as a people and we don't even see it. We so money hungry, we don't even see it's killing us. The message and what we're doing is killing the world and everything. We are we're killing ourselves, man, with this stuff. Yeah. But and how have you been? I know you've been able to make music throughout the quarantine, but how have you been otherwise? Well, I've been good, man, because yeah. I'm a loner. I don't I don't be around people. I don't do a crowd stuff. Um, so I'm always good because I'm always to myself. You know, when you're around people all the time, you can't be yourself. You can't yeah. even focus on yourself. You get some, most people forget who they are and they get to following everybody else and they be so caught up in being around everybody else, they forget who they are. So I'm good because my desires are different than people's. 
you know, my focus and motives to do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm straight, but I'm always mentally grounded, you know? Yeah. Try to be reading a lot, read the books and stuff. So I'm good. Yeah, you know? that's good. Cause I mean, I miss, I miss the old life. I'll tell you that being able to go outside and, and, and do things. You can't do that anymore. You got to wear a mask. Man, it's stupid. I'm so tired. Of this. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm thinking I got to get my mask. I'm going to get in the car, get my car, go to the store, forget my mask. I have to turn our way back around. It's a headache, dude. I hate it. I, hate, I hope it goes away, but I'm hoping the end of the year. I don't know when. I really don't. Because because thank God that Trump is out of office. So now we can finally get things moving forward a little bit. But it's it, the people have to, you know, Biden and Kamala Harris can only do so much. The people have to comply in order to get things done. They have to wear their masks. You got these people that don't wear masks. This is my thing, though, man. We We as the people always blaming and looking towards the government to do so much but we don't even we don't even do for ourselves you know we always oh that's the problem we hate each other we bring each other down we, we it ain't even them it's like we don't have no compassion for each other we don't care about each other so it's like people are like oh what are they gonna do what are we gonna do you know what i mean yeah hate didn't just start with trump that been like the this country been like this yeah been like this for centuries and you know? it's nothing new like we always want to blame one person or blame somebody else but who cares the hate who cares the ignorance who 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 supports the ignorance when you say something positive nobody want to hear it but if you post some negative you get a hundred thousand views on ignorance that's the problem with us you know we, we glorify ignorance we glorify prison we glorify stupid stuff you know we glorify hate you say you show somebody love they say you that you you you, you did grind all that, y'all. Oh, you doing too much. But when you try to show somebody, you know, but when you say you hate a person, everybody like, oh, it's some beef going on. Yeah, man. that's the problem with us, man. It's like we hate too much. We we we, we put too much energy into hate, and, and it's not the president and all that. That's not gonna check. That's not gonna do nothing for us. It's gonna take us to do it. And that's the issue. Yeah, I hope it. I hope it gets better. Like I said, I I think. Maybe by the end of the year, if everyone has compassion for each other, maybe if they listen to your music, they will, but I don't know. <laughs> or they, yeah, or they know. somehow go back into a time machine and listen to the, well, it, basically, like you said, you, you need a time machine in, in the 90s R&B law. They, they need that time I machine. One, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, that was the first thing I said. I wish, I, I wish we could, man, because then people would see real compassion and you know, I hate it, man. I hate the way things are, you know, but it sucks, man. I mean, may not even be able to walk a graduation either. It's just, you know, it, hurt. and it's, you can't even, you can't even have your day of celebration. It's dang, man. I hope you them. can though. I really hope you can though. I hope so. I, I, but realistically the pandemic is getting worse, which is crazy. And the news stations aren't even talking about it. No, no. You know, all this stuff is, con is, you know, controlled by certain people. They can only do and say what so much. Because you look at the Google charts, if you actually go and search for it, you see, oh, yeah, this is bad. This is worse than what it was last year at this time. They don't care, man. This money, this world is about business. They don't care. They just, it's all about money. And them. They don't care about the people. This is a corporation. This is not a country. This, they run it like a business. They don't care about the people. And that's the problem. Countries, real countries have kings and queens, not presidents. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> uh, this is a corporation. Jobs and corporations have presidents and vice presidents, not countries. And people need to read on that, man. I read a lot. So I know a lot. I just don't say it. I just be quiet. <laughs> you save it for when you're in the booth. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't talk about, I'm a reader. I like to learn the truth, the real truth. And people just need to realize they don't, nobody have your best interest at heart. So you got to, it starts with you. That's why I say it starts with us. We change the world we, we live and how we do, we can change the world. But until then, 
Yeah. I'm sure there's a cure out there for COVID-19. You get the vaccine. There's cures for these things that are out here, these ailments, but they, it's, why not? It's, it's you make more of a profit off of no money and treating no and curing nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no money in curing anything. Yeah. Uh, man, it's big business. Death is big business. Sickness is big business. Everything is about money. No, it's That's horrible. About- it, it, it always goes back to money. That's horrible. Like, People, you have to rely on a stupid treatment to get better. That's how much people value money over people. That's crazy. Why would you? I mean, it's a, it's a cure for everything. It's just natural. It's, drugs, it's not going to cure anything. They're not, a drug is only going to give you another issue, another problem, because it's man-made. Anything man-made is defective. If it's not on the earth, it didn't come from the earth, something wrong with it. You know, it's, you got to go back to the natural ways. I mean, that's why it's important to read and know where you come from. Because if you if you know what things started, you'll know what it takes to cure something. The earth cures everything. Yep. Everything that grows out of the earth. And, you know, that's simple. As simple as, you know, but we don't, we, we believe in man and not nature and history. You know, I mean, it's just it's common sense, really. But... Like I said, I'm only one person. I don't beat. <laughs> I, I don't try to convince people. Nothing. Yeah. I never get sick, so I'm not. I'm not. That's good. Never. That's good though. For your vocal coaching, do you have a vocal coach? I'm gonna say no. You train yourself. Never had. A vocal coach. Never. I never had nobody to coach me with nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's good. On the piano, I play by ear. Like I never had no type of. None of that. So I guess everybody just have gifts, you know. Yeah. Gotta be aggravated. But I'm I'm learning how to play the guitar now. So um, everything is self taught. Everything. That's good. Even producing. Every yep, producing. I, I taught myself how to make beats because I couldn't get beats from nobody. So it's like and every time I did get a beat, they was tripping. So it's like when so I was like, no, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just make my own beats. So that's what that's like. And, and those are amazing beats on the album, Love Bush Tree. You got some good ones on there. Yeah, man. I I I I I like get sometimes I get beats from people and they be cool people. Like I have a few people on the album that have done beats for me. Um Nicki Minaj producer done some production on there. Um, um I had one of my partners from London, he done some beats on there. But these people that I know personally, like I wouldn't just go out and be like, hey, no. I'm good. Like if I don't know you personally, I, I'm not gonna, you know, want to work with you because I yep. know this game. You know, you your song blow up, and then they change it. They change everything. Oh man, that's my beat, and it's like, man. So I'd rather do my own beats, really. Yeah. Collab with people because I want to see everybody make it that I rock with. Like I want to see people successful and make money. So. But I'd rather do it on my own. But you can't never do everything on your own. You always need some help somewhere. Everybody need help. You're right. You're absolutely right. And what was it like working with Nicki Minaj? And how long did you know her for? I didn't know. I worked with her producer. Oh, her producer. Yeah, I didn't. I don't. I've never met Nicki, man. But her producer, Milana, um, Jay Reed, this dude, dope. He did a lot of her dope singles that that recently came out. He dope. And he got that R and B. He got a good sound. Yeah. But um, these down to earth people, they don't act like they this big people. They just calm, chill people. You know, you don't even see them unless you just know. You got to. Yeah. You know. And the money, and the money changes you too. Uh, after time, I don't know if it's the money or the fame. I don't know what it is, but there's certain people that that have a lot of money that'll do certain things, but then there's others that just stick their nose up to everything. Yeah, it's it's both, man. It's both. This money make people feel entitled, and the fame makes them. It gives them this this big arrogant, you know, attitude. So it's both. It's not just you know money, man. It's both. It's not just fame. People think money makes them better than other people. It's the it's the class system issue. It is, but this is how this world's set up. You treat people, think about it. You treat people according to how much money they make, what kind of job they got, what type of car they drive. 
That's how we treat people, which is sad, you know. I don't treat people like that. I don't care about none of that. I treat people according to how they, who they are, how they treat other people, how they care of themselves, you know. Yeah. But we got a lot of work to do, man. It's people yeah. as human to change this. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. A lot of positivity. I know you said before that you want to get into acting. Have you been in touch with any acting studios or any corporations to get any placements or auditions or anything for upcoming movie, anything? I don't. Um, I have a partner that's an actor. And he in a lot of big stuff. Uh, he was in um, Body Cam with Mary J. Blige. He, was, he got a show on BET now called... Um, um, sacrifice. Mm. So he'd be kind of like telling me what I need to do, how I need to do it. I don't know any connections in the movies like that. Um, but I just feel like it takes networking. That's it. I know some people are trying to get my music in movies, but I don't know any of the acting. Just me becoming an actor. I know coach. I know actresses. I've dated actresses. So I don't know <laughs> names, but <laughs> <laughs> but um that been in big movies so i i, I know of it but i i don't have no connections in it. but it's all about time man it's gonna come yeah what was the craziest studio session that you ever had i saw a throwback picture with gucci main i saw boosie oh boosie my partner i got a lot of stuff with him um but i gotta say the craziest session i had it was the first time I moved to LA. I moved to Los Angeles. And it was Stevie J. It was uh, um, a lot of big people. And it was, it was like 15, 16 major people in the studio that night. Like one set. That was the first time I seen Stevie J play instruments. This dude could play, I think, 13 instruments. That's crazy. Yeah. I, that was my first time I ever seeing it. And I was like, dude, man, like, like that session was eye opening to me. Um, that was the dopest session. And I done been in sessions with Corrupt from, I done been in a- From uh, Dog Pound, yeah. I done been in sessions with uh, Devontae that did it like pop beats, all that. I done been in the studio with some of the dopest people, bro. But that was because of the feeling of the music and the vibe, the energy in that studio was just like unexplainable. Like, I don't care about famous people. Like, it's a feeling to be around certain artists, that's like the dopest thing. Man. Like, and being around in that session with Stevie J was like, and I wasn't even there for him. Like, I, I didn't even know him then, but I was, I came with somebody else. And then when it was just like, I came with my partner Eastwood. Eastwood, my partner, he uh he played in a Tupac movie, like as uh as Pac, like, like as Suge right hand man on the on the um, All Eyes on Me. That's one of my partners from LA. And um he I came to the studio with him. And that's how I met P and everything. Like I know a lot of real cats in the industry, bro. Like that, this, this, that don't get enough credit. That's one of them. But that session alone, bro, that was like the just the real music being created in an environment with a lot of dope artists. Just that's that's what music is about to me. You know what I mean? You're exactly right. That's what the music is about. Especially the people that you admired. I'm um, corrupt is a big one too, the dog pound. Yeah. Classic hip hop duo. It's the truth. And I got some connections to him too. And I'm probably gonna be working on him soon. Um, oh, that'd be fire. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now's the time. Now's the time that you're in quarantine. Map everything out. That's the thing. Cause because once the doors do open back up, and I'm hoping by the end of this year, that's when you go. Now it's now it's time. Now you want to work to get back out into that normal frame, that normal light that we were all used to, because now I think the quarantine with everything, with the pandemic, it, it makes you reflect on how much that you miss of being in that normal light. Yeah, I mean, I think things are gonna be different this time when it comes to just people interacting and, and, and how people network and it's gonna be totally different, but- Oh yeah. I'm ready, man. I've been doing a lot of networking, a lot of major music. Um, so, when it does happen, when it does open back up, I'm about to make history, man. I got some things in the play that's coming. Yeah. You can hear it in the music. You don't even, 
you don't even have to say it from what you're saying now in the interview. You can hear it in the music. The talent's going to take you farther. That's what I feel, man. I feel like if you just be true to your gifts, it's going to open so many doors to you. Once you try to be something that you're not, then you're killing yourself. You're hurting your 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 um your capabilities and you're like pushing yourself back because you're trying to be something that you're not. And me personally, talent and gifts win over everything to me. You know, yeah. In the end, but man, look, we got a lot coming. You know, yep. I hope you stay on the music. I have another song coming out. I want you to. You know, get on. Yep. I got more music that I want you to be up on, but like I said, we need to push this other album a little bit more. You know, it takes time. It's not. It's not on iTunes or any of the platforms anymore because I usually I shout it out. Go check it out on Apple Music on, and all that. It's on every one of them, but Apple Music. I don't know what's going on. Apple Music. It's on That's Apple. crazy. It's on Spotify. It's on Title. It's on every one of them. Good. Besides, I don't know why. What's going on with uh? iTunes, dude. I don't know. Uh, Cause if you go to my Spotify, you'll see it. Love the street, you see it. You know, every every song, Love the Street, right there. Like on every other platform. I don't know. iTunes be tripping. That's crazy. Yeah, cause when did that happen? I noticed that recently. It recently happened, and I don't know how to fix it. But you don't know what the deal is, dude. Unbelievable. Hopefully the next album stays on there permanently. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> if it doesn't, I don't know what's going to... Because is that is that the main way you profit? I'm thinking iTunes, right? No, nah, man. No? Spotify is major. Dude. Spotify is the one? Spotify major. Um, uh, it's really about... The streams. Collectively all around. All of, you know, um, your royalties and your publishing is big. You know, it ain't even about too much of it's about streams but your royalties is in your and your publishing is your whole because your publishing is radio is is uh um i mean your royalties your royalties is radio um um like iHeartRadio, radio all of anywhere else that your song is streamed besides that you still get paid in so many other ways besides those platforms so you know i'm not even tripping off the money bro like <laughs> because i be making so much doing other artist stuff like working writing produ- like, the money will come like not a big deal they can't yep. money. you know everybody jump on your back when you're hot when you're popping that's coming so that's I- coming look at the following you have now on instagram look at the following that you built and you only have one album right one album a few singles not even been out pushing it long. It takes time. I don't even be on social media no more. Then I come on now, like 50 people don't follow, 100 people. I'm like, oh, I don't even be posting like that. You know, I've been trying to detach myself away from social media. It's such a big distraction. Yeah. Such a waste of time. You know, it's good to network, but it's so toxic. It messes with your energy, seeing all that evil stuff on there all the time. So I just be trying to stay away from all that. Yeah. It sucks. It does. It consumes so much time out of your life when you could be using it, using that time to invest into yourself to better yourself for the future. And that's something that even I'm got to work on. That's on getting better. It's okay though, man. I mean, as long as you balance it all out, don't make it live become your whole life. Like most people, um, I've dealt with some crazy stuff on social media, crazy people. So it's dangerous too. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, you get freaks. You get your crop of freaks on there too. Yeah, I, I deal with that all the time. So it's, it's not. <laughs> it's horrible at times. Yeah, it is, man. And you know, anything else that you want to let the listeners know, the show know, anything? Yeah. Um, what I really want the people to know, just I want to say, you know always go back to what things started you know always don't ever forget what where things come from and where they started and that's that's how i really want to say and that's from music that's from life that's from everything because when you forget 
what why things started and how things started, then you become confused on what's real, what's relevant, what's valuable. So yeah, always remember what was. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Always remember what was exactly. Kendall Thomas, man, I want to thank you for having you on the show here tonight. It was a great time. I know we've been talking about it for a long time now. It finally, it finally came to fruition. Love with Street and go check that that out on all platforms except for iTunes, iTunes and Apple Music. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, it's I'm great. so used to saying go check it out on all platforms. I know, and, I know, man. It's okay. Everything happens for a reason, man. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. No doubt. And when you drop the new album, man, you got to come back. I'm definitely coming back, man. You know it, dude. We liked it. We we. I'm 100 with you, so I'll let you know. Keep you posted, man. No doubt. All right, Kendall Thomas, take care. Stay safe. Looking forward to the new music. I'm sure everyone will be tuned in, and whatever you send me, it'll be put in the rotation up here. All right, I appreciate you, brother. All right, Kendall Thomas, take care, man. All right, you too, man. Yeah.